Matt Sweeney is an Irish figure who has received a lot of attention from his contribution to the novel and the TV show American Gods. He's described in the show by a character called Mr Ibis as someone who was a god king, a god of the sun, a god of luck, of craft, art, of everything valuable to his civilization. The shining one, they used to call you, he said. But he's also referred to as a giant leprechaun. So he has a number of attributes, but which ones are the best representation of Mad Sweeney? Well, the story of Sweeney is a tricky one, as like all myths, it has changed with time, with parts added and taken away. Then the Christians came to Ireland and stories disappeared, separated, merged, and so there's no one correct story. So what I present is an overview of his main myth in a version that makes most sense to me, uh, and I'll explain why. And so then let's journey to ancient Ireland and welcome to the story of Mad Sweeney. And welcome to Crackenford. So let's get to the bottom line first. There is no god named Mad Sweeney. Uh, not in Irish folklore anyway. There may be elsewhere in the world. Um, however, we can infer from the American god storyline that the person the story is trying to represent is the Sweeney of Irish medieval myth uh, and folklore. And this Irish myth was called the Frenzy of Sweeney. The story is known as Buil Swivney in Irish, with Buil meaning frenzy or mad, and Swivney being translated as an English name, Sweeney. So Buil Swivney is a legendary figure in myth, but he was no god, and Swivney's actual name was said to be Swivney McColmine, uh, and he was sometimes referred to as Swivney Gilt. So some also say he was the king of Dal Lady uh, and a member of Clan Colmine. So let's look at the myth and see what that tells us. And to start off, we have to go back to 637 CE, when Swiveney hears that there is a cleric on his land looking to build a church, and he rushes to confront him and stop him. Swiveney's wife tries to stop Swiveney running out and grabs his cloak, but Swiveney ignores her, and the consequence of that is his cloak is ripped off, and that leaves him naked as he runs to the cleric. The cleric in question was Saint Ronan, and when Swiveney confronts him, he grabs the cleric's book of psalms and he throws them in a nearby lake. And then he goes to remove the cleric from his land. But whilst he's doing this, a messenger arrives and says that the Battle of Magrath is about to take place and Swiveney has to rush off to that, leaving St. Ronan to curse him, saying that Swiveney will forever be naked, wandering and flying throughout the world and it may be death from a spear point that carries him off. The eve of the Battle of Magrath comes, and Swiveney and St. Ronan paths cross once more. St. So Ronan's there blessing his men with psalms before the battle, and Swiveney takes this as an insult, a taunt if you like, and so he kills one of St. Ronan's men with a spear, and then he takes another spear and throws it at St. Ronan. The cleric deflects it and spear flies in the air, and that gives St. Ronan time to curse Swiveney once again, saying, May you fly like a bird, and may the death which you have incited on my men be that that carries you off. And that is death from a spear point. The battle commenced, but the noise of the battle drove Swiveney mad and into a frenzy. He felt deep uncertainty of where he was or where he had ever been. And he began to wander, hiding in trees until found, and then he would wander more, always naked, and ended up in trees. And he wandered around Ireland and Scotland and a lot of Europe. But as he wandered, people would notice his footsteps were so light, it appeared as though he was flying. And some say he took the form of a bird. And through his wandering or flying, he found his way to teach Molling, which means the house of St Molling. And there, St Molling allowed Swiveney to have a small meal left out by a serving lady every night. And she also gave Swiveney milk. But this was in a hole, a hole made by the serving lady's foot digging into some cow dung. But over time, rumours then started that there was an affair between Swiveney and the serving lady. And these types of tale have a habit of eventually arriving where they're not welcome. And this was in the serving lady's husband's ear. Without waiting for an explanation, her husband saw that Swiveney was drinking his milk and so killed Swiveney with a spear to his chest. 
And so the curse from St. Ronan of Swivney had been fulfilled. But the story doesn't end there. Or, I should say, it doesn't start where it started. As the figure of Swivney has been around longer than the 7th century, it is believed that Swivney was originally King Luch of the Torta de Danan, and so the High King of Ireland, from around 1870 to 1830 BCE. And as the king, he would have fought against the Fotherlands, uh, who were led by his grandfather, Balor. And Swivney killed Balor by throwing a spear through his eye. And this is a story which has some parallels to the old Norse myth of Balder. But we need to put some perspectives of time around this. The Irish myths aren't as old as the old Norse, and so they may well have evolved from stories when the Vikings came to Ireland, which would have been at the end of the 8th century. And this story wasn't written down, the story of Swivney, until around the 9th century, so some time after. And there was also no way Swivney was an historical figure if he was alive in the 7th century and two and a half thousand years earlier. However, there's more to this due to the uncertainty of where the history ends and the myth starts. You see, some historical manuscripts say that Swivney is the son of Colman Cuer, who was a pagan king of the Dal Naladi, which was an historical kingdom across the counties of Down and Antrim. Now, Colman Cuer was an historical figure and noted in the book uh, The Annals of Tiganach, uh, which was written in the 12th century, but refers to historical periods going back to as far ago as the 5th century. And the Book of Lismore also states similar facts, and this was written in the 15th century. Now, it's not known how accurate these books are, as they were written hundreds of years after the events which we were interested in. But it is an intriguing prospect to know that in the Annals of Tiganak, where they mention Swivney as the son of Coleman, they actually note him dying in the Battle of Magaloth, thus making Bruce Swivney seem like the imagining of a character based on an historical but now dead warrior. However, there's no mention that Coleman Cure's son, Swivney, was ever a king. Though, although some researchers still believe this is in the bounds of possibility, um, perhaps achieving this position through being an elected regent. However, American gods has tried to infer to people that Swivney was Loch uh, and was associated with the sun and was a leprechaun or went mad looking after a stone. But we have no solid academic evidence uh, of this uh, and I'm sure these thoughts have been influenced by other stories in the history of Ireland. And this is exactly how myths develop, how they change, with people believing and repeating these tales. I do like the book American Gods as a decent piece of escapism, you know, based on some well-known myths, although Matarini only appears in a book for two chapters, uh, but he gets good airtime on a TV show, so he seems to get his luck from somewhere, so there may be some leprechaun blood in him, who knows. Uh, but I must also add that trying to understand the most authentic tale of Swivney uh, is difficult, as decent translations of the Irish books are few and far between, making the task very much more challenging than it would normally be. And certainly I'd recommend to anyone taking uh, this journey uh, to seek two translations, Heaney's of 1983 and O'Keefe's of 1913, and then you can at least try and walk a path between the two to give you some balance. So there we have it, a tale that has no doubt been influenced by Christianity to make a pagan legend suffer the power of Christ. Uh, Mad Sweeney is primarily based on Will Swivney, a character who may have been influenced by an historical figure who was said by some to have changed into a bird to fly around. And he did take food and milk that was left out for him before finding death by spear point. But he was never a god, and he was certainly no giant leprechaun. And with that... That is my story of Swivney or Mad Sweeney. I hope you stay safe and stay well. Take care. And this was Crackenford. <laughs>